for Dodger Baseball. Live from AT&T Park in San Francisco, Sportsnet LA presents the Dodgers as they take on the San Francisco Giants. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant good evening to you, wherever you may be. Game two of the three-game series with a day game tomorrow to conclude, and then the same two clubs will go round and round at Dodger Stadium starting next Monday night. Tonight, the marquee matchup we've all been waiting for, Clayton Kershaw and Madison Bumgarner. For the first time, you're going to have the World Series MVP. Naturally, that would be Bumgarner. And the reigning MVP of the National League, Clayton Kershaw. How have they done? Well, Kershaw, 3-0 and against the Giants last year. Beat them twice up here. He is 14-5 and lifetime. Bumgarner had a lot of decisions, three wins and two losses against the Dodgers last year. The Dodgers coming up with a seven-game winning streak. That was snapped as the Giants looking a lot better, having had finally a day off on Monday. They had played 14 straight, and it looked like that on the field. Tomorrow, the concluding game of the series, it'll be Ryan Vogel's song. The Dodgers have not announced their pitcher. The Dodgers, by losing last night, are certainly hearing footsteps right behind them, 25 percentage points behind them, the San Diego Padres. And they'll be in San Diego for the weekend. So those are the pregame notes. Pull up a chair and stay with us. We've got a great ball game coming up and a whole lot more right after this.
Indians to make their way to the ballpark to catch a Dodger game. And why not? A wonderful matchup today in game two of a three-game set between the Dodgers and the Giants. Clayton Kershaw against Madison Bumgarner. Hello, everybody, and welcome inside AT&T Park. I'm Alana Rizzo. Clayton Kershaw on the hill tomorrow, but until about 3.30 this afternoon, tomorrow's starter was TBD. It is no longer a mystery. It is going to be Mike Bolsinger. And so far in his major league career in nine starts, a one and six record, a 5 5 ERA and just one time as he pitched here at AT&T Park it didn't go so well and nine ERA in five innings of work however that was then and this is now and he's excited about the opportunity.
everybody, and a very pleasant Wednesday evening to you, wherever you may be. We're here at AT AT&T Park in windy San Francisco. A bit difference with the wind tonight. Last night blew hard all night from the right field corner straight across towards center field. Tonight, it's blowing straight out, at least for the moment. So for Don Mattingly, well buttoned up along with everybody else in the dugout, we'll take a look at a a windy lineup which will be required tonight. For the Dodgers, they change a little bit. Not Jimmy Rollins, he continues to lead off, but Justin Turner is going to play first base and hit second. Then you have Yasiel Puig and Howie Kendrick. Scott Van Slyke will make a start tonight. Chris Heisey just called up from Oklahoma City. He will be in center field to give Jock Peterson a rest. Juan Uribe, A.J. Ellis, and Clayton Kershaw the Dodger lineup. On the mound for the Giants, one of the great postseason pitchers of all time, Madison Bumgarner, with a record of one and one. He had a record of four and one in the post, an earned run average of one. He had a save in seven games. So altogether, he had two wins. He also had a five inning save game, and his earned run average in the World Series was less than half a run. It's the best, and the big left hander ready to go to work against Jimmy Rollins. So Bumgarner into the windup, flips the first pitch way inside, ball one, one and oh. It is not very often that Kershaw and Bumgarner will bang heads, but they're going to do that tonight, and it figures they will do it again Monday night at Dodger Stadium. Rollins, meanwhile, fouls one away off to the right out of play, and the count one and one. First thing you notice when you look at Bumgarner, he is a big man. He is 6'5", about 235 pounds. He's only 25 years old, and as we said, he has sparkling credentials, especially after his work in the postseason. The 1-1 pitch on the way is a fastball a little high. Ball 2-2-1. Two, two and one. For Kershaw and Baumgarner, they've gone head-to-head three other times, and Baumgarner has won two of the three. Kershaw won up here 6-1 to one, way back in 2011 as Rollins takes his drive. Bumgarner beat the Dodgers and Kershaw 2-1 to one a couple of years ago at Dodger Stadium. And Bumgarner beat the Dodgers again at Dodger Stadium 4-2, to two, beating Kershaw. The next pitch, a bounced breaking ball into the dirt, and the count 3-2. and two. What does Bumgarner think of Kershaw? Well, during the offseason, they talked about the day that he bought a horse. He is very much of a farmer into cattle roping, etc. And he was talking to his agent about this horse. He said, it is a great horse. It's tremendously strong. He said, it's a Clayton Kershaw horse. And the agent said, no, it's a Madison Bumgarner horse. Meanwhile, Rollins fouls it off, and the count stays three and two. So Jimmy Rollins trying to get something started. The Dodgers in first place. Not that the standings are that important, but nevertheless, you like to know where you are and where the opposition is. The Dodgers are 25 percentage points ahead of San Diego right now. Bumgarner ready, and the 3-2 pitch is swung on and missed, and down goes Rollins, a slider that fooled him at the last minute, and we have one away. Interesting, too, as we check the Giants defensively. Belt returns to the lineup. Matt Duffy is in there tonight. Crawford and Arias. Aoki, Pagan, and Maxwell. And Posey goes behind the plate tonight to handle Bumgarner. Just as A.J. Ellis will be behind the plate to handle Kershaw. Justin Turner hitting 353. Hitting right around 300 up here in this ballpark. Turner last night came off the bench. Finished up at third. Right hand hitter has a look at the first pitch and that misses ball one. Interesting how Bumgarner, when he pitches against the Dodgers in Dodger Stadium, is seven and three and an earned run average of two. Up here, he's four and two with an earned run average a little over three. Kershaw is directly the opposite. Kershaw is brilliant up here. He is eight and two. And his earned run average up here against the Giants is 0.8. Though we will see about tonight as they go after each other. 
the 2 0 pitch on the way. Turner takes a breaking ball strike and the count 2 and 1. Baumgartner's name is a German name and they can trace it back to the 1200s. A marriage of two families, the Baums and the Gantz. The next one swung on and missed, and they count two and two. In that small area in North Carolina where they live, just outside of Lenore, Caldwell County, they say of the 305 buried in the local cemetery, at least 55 are bum gardens. And what's really odd, when he was growing up, he dated a girl in high school named Madison Baumgartner and to this day there is a girl in his high school right now and her name is Madison Baumgartner. Two balls and two strikes they count the background on the bums as they call them the 2 2 pitch on the way is fouled off to the right good sneaky fastball at 93. Baumgartner during the postseason amassed 52 and two third innings the most innings by anyone surpassing Kurt Schilling who had 48 for the D-backs back in 2001. Now the left hander ready turns and the 2 2 pitch on the way swung on popped in the air to the right side Brandon Belt on the line now in foul ground now in fair and makes the catch for the out. So if you're keeping score turn it popped up to Brandon Belt two down. And here comes Yasiel Puig. And if there is a rivalry between the individual players, I guess it would be centered here with Bumgarner and Puig. They've had a few uh, disagreements, normally separated. But nevertheless, if you've watched any of the Giant Dodger games involving Puig and Bumgarner, well, you go back to Puig hitting a home run. Bumgarner didn't like how long it took Puig to get around the bases. Bumgarner came off the mound and was halfway to the foul line hollering at Puig and the first pitch to Yaciel is low ball one one and oh Puig is hitting 273 against Bumgarner and he has two home runs. So Yaciel waiting one ball and no strikes two down first inning we are just starting and the 1 0 pitch at the knuckles inside at the hands at 93 two balls and no strikes to Yaciel Puig. They boo him up here and that's a tribute. Puig in his young career hitting 319, five home runs, 11 runs batted in against the Giants. Last night he had two singles going two for four. Now the 2-0 pitch on the way and that's a fastball at the knees for a strike. Very effortless delivery by Bumgarner. You can't tell whether he's going to throw a fastball or a straight changeup. With the arm speed, it looks exactly the same. Madison ready, and his 2 1 pitch instead, he thinks better of it and backs off the rubber. Bumgarner, very much the rancher, the cowboy, a very good rope roper. Here's a 2 1 pitch on the way. Weeks swings a high fly ball slicing down the right field line. Maxfield coming over, it's going to drop for a base hit. And Yasiel will hold with a single. So Puig, a fly ball single to right, and that will bring up Howie Kendrick. So Yasiel continues to swing a good bat against San Francisco. And now here is Kendrick trying to move him around. Howie Kendrick has been not a pleasant surprise. The Dodgers knew they had a good ball player, but he has been just so consistent day in and day out. He has hit safely. In 11 of 13 games, he's had seven multi hit games. Puig short lead, Bum gone to the plate, fastball in there at 91. Kendrick looking down, Lorenzo Bundy coaching at third, flashing a sign perhaps. Puig a very conservative lead at first base. Bum Garner looking into Posey in the outfield deep and straight away. Strike one pitch on the way fastball hit foul up along third and the count 0 and 2. So Madison Bumgarner and Clayton Kershaw it's a first you have the regular season MVP that would be Kershaw and a reigning World Series MVP Bumgarner 
first of its kind a starting pitching matchup in major league history and remember it figures they'll do it again Monday night at Dodger Stadium. Strike two pitch on the way check swing strike three down this Kendrick and what looked like a high fastball so for the Dodgers no runs one hit two strikeouts for Bumgarner and Kershaw is getting ready at the end of half an inning Dodgers nothing Giants coming up. Boshi's lineup the champions three times in the last five years the Boshi has done an incredible job he has his leadoff man the left fielder Nori Aoki followed by the second baseman Matt Duffy instead of Joe Panic Angel Pagan in center Buster Posey hits clean up behind the plate Justin Maxwell bid night last night he's in right field Brandon Bell at first base Joaquin Arias will be at third Brandon Crawford at short Madison Bumgarner on the mound and of course on the mound for the Dodgers Clayton Kershaw one and one three and zero oh against the Giants last year 14 and five lifetime Nori Aoki smallish left hand hitter first pitch to him little low and outside ball one one and zero. Oh. Aoki has faced Kershaw. He is one for nine against him. The 1 0 pitch on the way. Nori takes a strike and they count one and one. Aoki, of course, played for Kansas City in the World Series against the Giants. And when he walked into the training headquarters in spring training, he was looking for Juan Perez. And although he doesn't speak a lot of English, as he walked by Perez, he said, Nice catch. When Bumgarner came in game seven in the fifth inning, Aoki hit a ball he thought was going to tie up the game. He checks and the pitch is low. They look at third, no swing, and the count three and one. Then Perez made that great diving catch to take the extra base hit away from Aoki, and now he's one of them, a giant. 3 1 pitch on the way. Fastball swung on and missed. Kershaw opens up at 94. Clayton Kershaw, 8 and 2 against the Giants up here with an earned run average of 0.8. Now the 3 2 pitch swung on and foul back. Fastball in on the hands. In this cold weather, that has to hurt. Aoki asking the plate umpire, was that a strike? Clint Fagan. Behind the plate. So three and two to Nori. He'll be followed by Matt Duffy and then Angel Pagan. Three two curveball foul back. And boy, that was a dandy. That, he threw it so hard. Maybe that was his slider. That had a lot of jump to it. Duffy waiting. The Giants right now are five back of the Dodgers, if that means anything so early in April. 3-2 pitch to Aoki and the left-hander fouls it away. 
And that's as hard as Kershaw has thrown in the sequence. He hit 95 on the gun. Bruce Boshi, he's been involved in four World Series, managed three, won them all, was a pinch hitter in the World Series and got a base hit. He is quite a man. Three and two to Aoki. Here comes Kershaw, and it's a comeback and knocked down by Kershaw. Picks it up, fires to first in time. Clayton really blocking that with his body, got up out of the dirt and made the play. So Aoki hits back one away. Nice play by Clayton on the mound, kind of a backward with his back to home plate, took a swipe to slow it down, and Aoki is retired. So we have one out here in the first inning, and Matt Duffy will be coming up. First inning, no score. Clayton with a gold glove in his locker. Back in 2011, the current gold glove Dodger, Zach Granke. Now here's Duffy, and he takes a strike for the count 0-1. Duff grew up in Long Beach, living in the Say's house since he was one year old. Now the strike one pitch on the way. Duffy looks at a slow curveball at 75 miles an hour, and they count no balls and two strikes. Boy, he really delivered that pitch. Just floated that in there. Now the strike two pitch on the way. Another curveball hit down to short. Rollins backhands has to hurry. High throw and a nice play by Justin Turner. Little toe dance on the bag. So Rollins backhanding the ground ball and makes the play. Here are the Dodgers set up with the leather. It's Turner and Kendrick, Rollins and Uribe, Van Slyke, Heisey, and Puig. Ellis behind the plate, Kershaw on the mound. Chris Heisey off to a pretty good start in Oklahoma City after having a very poor spring with the Dodgers. And in order to give Jock Peterson a rest, he's been called up and playing tonight. The Mattingly wheeling and dealing, and here's Angel Pagan. Pitches high. One ball and no strikes. Pagan hitting 333. Angel hitting 282 against Kershaw. Looks at a strike. And the count one ball and one strike. Angel Pagan from a really tough part of town. Rio Pedras in the Domin in the uh, Puerto Rico and a really tough area. One one pitch curveball drops it in there. That's Kershaw boy when he can throw 95 and then come back with that 74 75 mile an hour curveball. He's really set to pitch a tough one. One and two the count to Angel Pagan. Kershaw looks down the barrel. And the one two pitch fastball just off the plate. Pagan talks about the fact that his teacher was his mother. She was a terrific softball player. She was so good. She played with the men. She was outstanding, they say. 2 2 off speed, lifted to right center. Puig coming over. Here comes Heisey, but it's Puig to make the catch. So down go the Giants, one, two, three, and at the end of an inning, the Giants nothing and the Dodgers nothing.
Giants and Dodgers locked in in game two. They'll wrap things up tomorrow. Then the Dodgers will move on to San Diego. And then we'll have another collision starting Monday night at Dodger Stadium. Bumgarner getting ready to pitch to Van Slyke, Heisey, and Uribe in that order. Scotty off to a huge start, hitting 462. Few at bats, and he's made the most of it. Bumgarner, deep in thought, looks in to get a sign, and we're about ready to go in the second inning. Madison ready in the first pitch, in for a high strike up around the letters, and the count 0 and 1. Van Slyke hitting 308 in the pass against Bumgarner. Bumgarner standing a little different off center as far as the way he is looking into home plate. Slow breaking ball is low, one ball, one strike. He stands on the rubber as if he is almost facing the first base foul line as opposed to looking right in at his catcher. This time he's ready and comes back 1-1. One, one. And drops an off speed pitch in there for a strike and the count one and two. Giants always talk about Bumgarner and a great competitor, a great battler. Well, Bumgarner's fought in the Civil War. Absolutely. Here's the one two pitch coming up. Van Slyke swings, ground ball to short, tricky hop. Crawford stays with it and throws him out. One away and Chris Heisey coming up. Yeah, the Bumgarners. They had a man, Company H of the 58th North Carolina Infantry of the Confederate States Army. In fact, he was selected, his great grandfather, as one of the most gallant servicemen in the Battle of Chickamauga. So they go way back in North Carolina, sir. And here is Chris Icy. Icy looks at a strike in the count 0 and 1. Icy, as we mentioned, had a really poor spring. He was the first one to agree he should go out. However, he has bounced back, and at least for tonight, he's a Dodger. The strike one pitch is taken a little low. One ball and one strike. One out, second inning, no score. I see he'll be followed by Uribe. Bumgarner ready in the 1 1 pitch, and the right hand hitter checks up, and an off speed pitch is low, no swing, and the count two balls and one strike. It's cool enough for the first base umpire, Manny Gonzalez, to be bundled up wearing gloves. Now the 2 1 pitch coming up. Bumgarner ready, Madison delivers, and the pitch is high, ball three. Madison Bumgarner's father. Tells the story how he came to fancy the name Madison by noticing a headline in the Charlotte Observer about Madison County. That's about 60 miles west of Lenore. And his mom also noticed it and liked the name. 3 1 pitch is lifted down the left field line, but it is hooking as it goes foul in the second deck. And it's 339 down the line. So high seat pulls it too much. And the count three and two. The mother was convinced she wanted the name Madison because she looked it up in a book of baby names and it said Madison means the son of a great warrior. What about the girls in high school he dated named Madison? Three two on the way, way inside, and Heisey draws a walk. So a one out walk will bring up Juan Uribe. Former teammates going head to head. And Uribe in his career hitting 300 against Madison Bumgarner. And with his hitting, he has a home run against him. Juan off to a slow start and all of a sudden has perked up a little bit. He's got a base hit in each of his last four games. Meanwhile, he still has that great glove down there at third base. We're in the second inning, no score, really just starting. Bumgarner looks at Heisey and decides he best go over there. Heisey back on the bag. Very tough to run on either pitcher. Bumgarner had allowed a lot of stolen bases. In fact, two years ago he allowed 27, but last year only seven. Comes to the plate, and what a play that was. 
Brandon Belt was going to his right and Heisey was diving almost back to the bag. Though Heisey really did not have an idea about Bumgarner's move. Bumgarner has picked off 25. Look at that if you're watching on TV. One ball and no strikes. Though a lot of pickoffs, that pitch is going to go foul out of play. Bumgarner in his career has picked off 25, while Kershaw has picked off 49. The number one active pickoff pitcher would be Mark Burley. He's picked off 99. Kershaw 49 and as we said Bumgarner 25. One ball and one strike one out second inning no score. Madison almost set at the bill of the cap back with a little slider in for a strike and the count one and two. So it's kind of a dream matchup. Koufax and Marischal they, they didn't face each other a lot. We can tell you a little bit about that. They've met four times in their careers. Here's the one two pitch swung on and foul back. So this now is the fourth meeting between Bumgarner and Kershaw. Monday will be their fifth meeting. As far as Koufax and Marshall are concerned. Koufax won the first game. Four to three. Second game, the Giants knocked Koufax out in the first inning. The one two pitch instead throw to first in the dirt, and that's where Heisey is as well. Now, you want to talk about two premier pitchers going head to head. Don Drysdale and Juan Marichal met 16 times. The only Hall of Fame pitchers facing each other more often Tom Seaver and Steve Carlton. Uribe pops it up behind second base backtracking on the grass is Crawford to make the catch. So we have two down in the second inning and A.J. Ellis coming up. No score. Tom Seaver and the left hand is Steve Carlton. Seaver with the Mets and Carlton with the Phillies. They faced each other 17 times. That was then now is now. Madison Bumgarner and Clayton Kershaw. AJ hitting 143. Ellis hitting 105 against Bumgarner and takes high ball one. One and oh the count. We're in the top of the second inning. Dodgers had a two out single by Puig, but Kendrick struck out. Icy has walked and with two out is at first and AJ Ellis at the plate. Giants went out in order in their first inning. Ellis, meanwhile, lifts one foul off first. Belt coming over, but it's going to be back in amongst the customers, of which the Giants have many. Last night was their 335th sellout. 335, and it's a cinch, even though we see empty seats. This is another sellout as far as tickets sold. I mean, no baseball fan, if possible, would miss a battle between Bumgarner and the Giants and Kershaw and the Dodgers. 1-1 one, one pitch coming up. Bumgarner's fastball hit in the air to right field. Going back and over to his left is Maxwell. Makes the catch 40 out. Running well. Last night he made a magnificent sliding catch in foul ground. Banged up his knee, but he's all right, as you can see, running in. So, no runs, no hits, a man left at the end of an inning and a half, no score.
Clayton Kershaw, what he's done against the Giants. Here are some of the great Dodger pitchers of the past and what they've done against the Giants. Koufax, 17 and 11, ERA of three. Drysdale, 34-31, ERA of two. Hershiser, 22 and nine, ERA of three. Clayton Kershaw, 14 and five, an ERA of 1.4. And as we said, up here, out of sight, less than one. Facing Buster Posey, the multi-talented giant, whether he's behind the plate or first base, fouls it away. You know how closely they keep tabs on players. Last year, Posey loved the ball down. In fact, he hit 331 on pitches that were ranked down. He was behind only Mike Trout and Victor Martinez. Here's the strike one pitch on the way. Swung on, hit in the air to right field, sinking Puig, a diving catch for the out. Buster Posey looked like he had a cinch line drive single to right, but the ball hung and Puig never quit and made a great catch, holding on as he hit the ground. So Posey out on a diving catch and a good one, Yasiel Puig. One away. And the batter now, Justin Maxwell. Last night, turnabout was fair play. Maxwell made an incredible sliding catch of a foul ball hit by Pui. He slices one to right. Here comes Yasiel to one hand that one. Not as tough as the first play, but nevertheless, Pui right there with the big glove, and we have two down, and the batter will be Brandon Belt. So Kershaw in no trouble at all as Belt checks in. Belt is off to a very slow start. It doesn't mean he won't be heard, but right now batting 152. Kershaw ready and comes and misses low ball one. Lifetime against Kershaw. Belt is three for 27. That's a picket fence. 111. The 1 0 pitch on the way. Belt swings right through it. And they count 1 and 1. Brandon from Nacogdoches, Texas. Raised in a house that is dead built. 1 and 1. Big left hand batter. Swings and fouls it back. And they count 1 and 2. Belt in high school was a standout pitcher. Had a verbal agreement to go with the Cubs. Cubs didn't come through. Red Sox drafted him. Belt decided, I don't want to do either. I'm going back to college. And it worked out. Went from San Jacinto College to the University of Texas. One two pitch is in the dirt. Check swing on a bounce pitch. A tag at the plate. And Belt has struck out. So two fine defensive plays by Yasiel Pui. Certainly one of them on the ball hit by Posey. The other he had to just charge and handle. He made two and then Belt strikes out. And at the end of two, no score.
pitching to Clayton Kershaw. Kershaw checking in left handed all the way. And Bob Garner trying to rub a wrinkle in a new ball and here we go. No score in the third. Only one hit in the game a single by Pui. Bum Garner's fastball in for a high strike and the count all in one. Kershaw three for five in his career against Bum Garner. Of course Bum Garner is really a heavyweight with the bat. Strike one pitch on the way big curveball and Kershaw gave on it and it dropped in nicely and the count no balls and two strikes. That was a great pitch. Kershaw just bailed, got out of the way, and the ball just slid right into the strike zone. 0 oh and 2, the count. Bumgarner ready, fastball fouled away. One of the things that was a dramatic change in Madison Bumgarner's life, that's when he was named Sportsman of the Year. And that meant that Madison Bumgarner would have to acquire the first suit and tie he had ever owned. He's the rancher. The strike two pitch on the way in the dirt. Of course, you say, well, he got married to his wife, Allie. That's true. But he was married in a white open collar shirt and blue jeans. And in one of the pockets was a pocket knife. They really exaggerated. They say he bought his wife, Allie, a cow as a wedding present. That's not true. But she did want a cow, and he bought her one. Here's the one two pitch off the plate little 93 mile an hour fastball two and two the count Bumgarner like Kershaw not as sharp as you'd expect first couple of times out the two two pitch on the way fastball pout by just got by Kershaw he hit it before it went into the glove of Buster Posey. Tomorrow, the concluding game of the three game series, a day game, Ryan Vogelsong and Mike Bolsinger, just called up, will be on the mound for the Dodgers. So, for Don Mattingly, he's been saying a lot of hellos and goodbyes to a lot of people of late. Two and two to Kershaw. Bumgarner delivers, slider swung on, out of the dirt to throw the first, and that's the first out. That would be strikeout number three for Bumgarner. You know, friends, this season was celebrating with a Cy Young Pin Collector Series presented by 76. You can pick up pin number two featuring Don Drysdale Monday night, appropriately enough, when the Dodgers are playing the Giants. So visit Dodgers.com slash promotion. One away in the third. Jimmy Rollins struck out in the first inning. He checks in. Switch hitter batting right-handed. And a chopper foul outside of third and down the line. Arias wouldn't quit, made the play, but it didn't count. Oh, and one to count. We're in the top of the third. Big crowd, AT&T Park. It's still as cool as ever, but not as much wind as last night. What we do, however, it's still blowing out towards McCovey Cold. Meanwhile, everybody here well bundled up. Bumgarner holds the ball out in front. Now ready in the strike one pitch. Flips in there nicely. Little cutter that looked like. Oh, and two the count. Now the strike two pitch on the way. Bumgarner's off speed breaking ball is swung on and missed in the dirt. The tag applied by Posey. That's four strikeouts for Madison Bumgarner, and he nails Rollins a second time. We mentioned about Bumgarner the fact that he's great in taking a rope and being an accurate lasso twirler. In fact, he started competing in team roping when he was about 17 years old. He roomed with Jeremy Affelt for a while, and he said that Bumgarner was forever practicing roping cows by roping his furniture. <laughs> nice house guest. 
Bumgarner's fastball, a little blooper towards right field. It will drop for a base hit. Uh, Justin Turner, a two out flare to right. And the batter now will be Yasiel Pui, who has already made his presence known to the crowd. Yasiel single and has made two fine plays in right field. With his base hits, he has hit safely now in six in a row. And Bumgarner waiting for him to check in at the plate. Yasiel Pui coming into the game. Was hitting 273. He's now 7 for 23 with two home runs against Bumgarner. The Yasiel waiting. Bumgarner looking at Justin Turner. Short lead at first. Madison to the plate. And a slow breaking ball in for a strike. 0 and 1. No score. Top of the third inning. San Diego trying to turn it around in the Rockies. They were trailing. Last we heard, Padres were leading 4 3. 0 and 1 the count. Turner cautious lead. Puig waiting. Kendrick hitting back of him. Strike one pitch on the way. Way inside. Almost hit him. It was a breaking ball. Well, then again, no. It looked like it broke, but it was 93 miles an hour. The so one ball and one strike to count. It just sailed in at the knees and up here it looked like it ran. He just fired about thigh high. One ball and one strike. Talking about the Padres. Padres and Rockies are tied up 4-4 in the eighth inning. The 1-1 pitch on the way. Bumgarner delivers fastball hit in the air down the right field line. Slicing foul and drops untouched. So a proud Giants fan wearing the shirt, Bumgarner, handled the foul ball. Justin Turner goes back to first. Tweed back up to the plate. One and two the count. No runs, two hits for the Dodgers. Giants have been retired six in a row thanks to Puig's catch of the ball hit by Posey. Bumgarner again looking over at first and decides he'd best go over there. Interesting with Bumgarner, Adrian Gonzalez is only four for 35 against him. So Adrian sits down tonight. Turner with a base hit is playing first. Here's the one two pitch turn it goes slow curve ball it's hit up along third and goes foul. The Puig will have to come back try it again. Turner had a pretty good jump on that. So Yashio walking back to pick up his bat Bumgarner with a new ball. In fact Bumgarner wants to talk to Buster Posey. So they put it together while Puig comes back. Bumgarner, by the way, will be hitting third in the bottom of the third inning, and he is a very, very good hitting pitcher. All right, Puig has made it back up to the plate. No score, third inning. Light breeze blowing from right to left, nothing like last night. Turner again taking his lead, held on by Belt. The outfield, Pagan shaded slightly towards right center. Aoki has given Puig all of straightaway left field, so they're pinching the middle a little bit. One and two the count. The pitch to Puig, fastball hit on the hands, a little soft one caught by Belt, and that's it. Belt was catching it running from first base to the mound. So Puig is jammed and loops out. No runs, one hit, a man left. Time for Kershaw to go back out there at the end of two and a half innings. No score.
Joaquin Arias followed by Brandon Crawford and then Madison Bumgarner ready to go to work against Clayton Kershaw. Kershaw has retired six in a row. Arias fouls it back. Joaquin Arias is certainly accustomed to crowds. He has seven brothers and sisters in his immediate family, but his father had 14 other children with different wives, so he's the youngest of his father's 21 children. The strike one pitch and a line drive to center. That's in there for a base hit. The high seat gets it back in. So after six in a row are retired, Arias gets a single, and the batter now will be Brandon Crawford. Take another look at the location of the pitch. Kershaw, fastball about knee high out over the plate. Boom. Brandon Crawford is coming up. Brandon Crawford last night came up with two out, a runner at third, and surprised everybody with a bunt single. It was only the eighth bunt single in Crawford's career. Eric Ibar of the Angels, to give you an idea, has 94 bunt singles. And the first pitch, fastball, swung on and missed, and they count 0 and 1. As one of six players in Major League history to hit a grand slam in his first Major League game, and it was Brandon Crawford, first shortstop in Major League history to have hit a grand slam in postseason play. He did it against the Pirates last year. Strike one pitch on the way. That's in there at the knees. Though Crawford in a hole, no balls and two strikes. And remember, Madison Bumgarner, who is a right-handed hitter. Kershaw's left-handed all the way. Bumgarner pitches left and bats right. 0 oh and 2 to Brandon, MVP of the UCLA baseball team in 2006 and 2007. Brandon Crawford grew up a Giants fan. His father was a rabid Giants fan. Strike two pitch on the way. Brandon holds up and lays off a 94 mile an hour fastball. One and two. Crawford made a dazzling diving stop and turned it into a double play last night. It was a big play. Kershaw ready. And the one two pitch down and away. Two and two the count to Crawford. Nobody out here in the third. Arias with a base hit at first. Arias doesn't play a lot, though he does not have a stolen base. Two and two to Crawford. Kershaw decides to pay Arias a visit and goes over there. We talked a little while ago how Bumgarner and Kershaw really control the running game. Here's the 2 2 pitch on the way. Clayton set. Big curveball, but this one's high. He had thrown a couple of them for strikes, but not that time. And they count three and two. Up there and stayed inside. So with a full count and Bumgarner on deck, Bill Hayes, the coach at first, says something to Arias, who has a very cautious lead. Three and two. Arias is not going and it's foul back. Dodgers and Giants. Well, last year, Dodgers managed to win 10 of 19, including six out of nine here. But the Dodgers had a lot of trouble with the Giants at Dodger Stadium. They were four and six at home. So three and two, we'll watch Arias again. No score in the third. Kershaw looking, he's not going anywhere, and he's in the dirt to Crawford. So now the Giants have runners at first and second, and nobody out. And let's see about Bumgarner. You would expect a bunt. Bumgarner, by the way, is 0 for 6 in the young year and has struck out three times. But we're talking about a pitcher who last year led all pitchers in hitting. Home runs, 
RBIs, on base percentage, and slugging. He became the second pitcher in Major League history to hit two grand slams in one season. But the Dodgers think with all of those, he'll be bunting. We'll see. Kershaw set. Bumgarner's not showing bunt. Full swing foul. Bouncing one into the giant dugout. 0 oh and 1 to count. Joe Panic right in the middle had to duck and get out of the way. So no bunt there. He was swinging from the heels. Nevertheless, Uribe is still up inside the bag at third. Turner on the grass. Bumgarner shows bunt. Kershaw ready. And he bunts in the air over the backstop screen, trying to get a bunt down on a 94 mile an hour fastball. So let's see what they do now. 0 oh and 2. A swing and a foul, a bunt and a foul. Kershaw trying to put him away without a runner advancing. A.J. Ellis shuffling cards behind the plate. Bum Garner shows bunt. Now ready to swing and takes low. One and two. So Uribe especially has to figure, and of course he's played with Bumgarner, but he is back on the dirt. So the runners, Arias at second, Crawford at first, nobody out, third inning, and a one and two count to Madison Bumgarner. Kershaw from a stretch. The left hander ready in the one two pitch, curveball low. Scrambling stop by Ellis on his knee. Now that was a pitch he was getting over in the first two innings, and he has struggled a little bit now. Two and two to a very good hitting pitcher, Madison Bumgarner. Kershaw at the belt. Runners take their leads. And the 2 2 pitch on the way. Bumgarner shows Bunt and gets it down. Kershaw a sliding stop and throws him out. So even with two strikes, Bumgarner does his job and moves the runners over. Bumgarner getting a round of applause, standing applause. Kershaw had to make a slide on the grass and then very easily he threw the ball. So you have second and third now. And Nori Aoki coming up. Aoki, his wife, was a popular TV sports commentator in Japan. She'd like to sing his praises now. Last night, he was two for five. The corners are up. Second and third, one out. Kershaw's fastball at the knuckles. Ball one. One and oh. Aoki was flattened last night by Libertor. Well, they like to keep all in on him. Bumgarner with the windbreaker on back in the dugout. Second and third, one out. Third inning, no score. Kershaw at the belt and the 1 0 fastball, and that's inside. Aoki right on top of the plate. So you've got to pitch in on him, and he has to count his way to Endo. Dodgers trying to keep it in, and that was too far in and a little up. So 2 0 to Nori Aoki. The 2 0 pitch on the way. Fastball on the hands, fouled away. Nori Aoki played with the Brewers, and he had a, a baby boy born, and he wanted to give the boy an American name. So Nori went to one of our favorite people, Bob Euchre, to pick an American name, and Bob Euchre came up with the name Aaron. After Henry Aaron. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Aoki almost hit again. 3 and 1 to count. He is a pest. He's only 5 8, and he's right on top of the plate. Lifts that right leg, and anything inside, he just bails. And if you pitch away to get a strike out over the plate, he can handle it. Came into the game hitting 344. 
on deck. Matt Duffy. The three and one with first base open one out scoreless in the third. Kershaw high set left hand ready. Here he comes fastball in the hole backhanded by Rollins to make the play for one out run scores over to third base on the play goes Crawford and the Giants lead one to nothing. So Aoki hit the ball of the hole. Good play by Rollins. He did not have a play at the plate. He was back. So the run scored easily. And then Crawford heads up, even with the ball hit ahead of him. As soon as Rollins uncorked the throw to first, why well, Crawford was on his way to third. So Aoki grounds out 6 3, picks up a run batted in, and the Giants lead 1 to nothing. The chant begins beat L.A. So with two out Crawford at the bag at third and the bat of Matt Duffy who grounded to short 0 for 1. Kershaw ready fastball hit in the air to shallow center. I see a diving try can't make the catch scoring is Crawford and the Giants lead two to nothing. So the ground ball by Aoki winds up netting the Giants two runs and they're not finished yet as Angel Pagan will be coming up. Icy was pretty deep tried to make the catch came close but no cigar. So here's Pagan who flied to right field in the first inning. Duffy at first Kershaw goes over there. Matt Duffy with a flare single to center and a run batted in. Giants two runs, two hits. Dodgers no runs, two hits. Pagan batting 328. Terrific all around player. Kershaw set and delivers and it's fouled away. Angel Pagan was about 13 years old, trying to stay in shape. And he frequented a batting cage near a building where the great Puerto Rican welterweight boxing champion Felix Trinidad trained. And he would watch Trinidad going through the grueling work to get ready for a fight. And he was so impressed he joined the gym and started to train just like a fighter. He worked the speed bag to build shoulder strength. After 500 at bat he said you have to have your shoulders strong. Here's the strike one pitch on the way. Pagan takes slow curveball in for a strike. 0 and 2. So not only did he work on the speed bags, he did just about everything else that you would do in order to get into the ring. Angel waiting. Throw to first, not in time. You know, you forget ball players are really human, and we've tried to make them human to you and a lot of them have a lot of problems for instance Pagan he has a daughter who had surgery on both eyes at the age of two she had strabism the inability to focus both eyes simultaneously strike two pitches in the dirt ball one one and two to Angel Pagan. Giants jump out to a two to nothing lead here in the third inning. A one ball two strike count. Duffy at first. Kershaw looking at him and with two out the one two pitch Pagan pokes it on the ground grabbed in foul ground by Justin Turner. Still one and two. So in the inning Arias opened up with a single. Crawford walked. The sacrifice by Bumgarner put runners at second and third. Aoki grounded to the hole. Rollins had to throw to first. Scoring was Arias. And Crawford heads up. Went from second to third on the throw to first. And then Duffy singled. And the Giants have two. Kershaw ready. There goes the runner. And the off speed pitch is swung on and missed. So Pagan goes down on a 75 mile an hour breaking ball. But not before the Giants get two. 
And at the end of third, Bumgarner ready to saddle up, leading two to nothing. to you by the 2015 Jeep Cherokee. With an EPA estimated 31 highway MPG, it's the perfect choice. Visit Jeep.com today. Giants lead the Dodgers two to nothing in the fourth inning. Baseball is such a difficult game to figure out. Take Clayton Kershaw against the Giants, against the numbers four, five, and six hitters. The top hitters in the giant lineup, he had seven pitches to put them away in the second inning. Kendrick slices one in the air to right. Maxwell goes to the track to one hand it. Well, Howie's not around long, hits it hard, but lines out to right. So the point being, Kershaw made only seven pitches against the tough hitters. And then the bottom of the lineup, the number seven, eight, and nine batters. He wound up making 25 pitches and giving up two runs. Owen's been able to figure out the game since. And here is Scott Van Slyke, who grounded to short 0 for 1. Mile high pop fly. Brandon Belt, fair ground. Two down. By the way, we talked about the fact that. Clayton Kershaw has been so successful here in San Francisco. Eight wins and two losses. Well, the two losses, both of them, were two to nothing. And he's down two nothing here in the fourth. Two quick outs. Chris Heisey playing center field. Walk in the second inning. Strike. Heisey walked. After hitting one into the second deck, foul down the left field line. No balls and one strike to Chris. Big slow breaking ball up. One and one. Another breaking ball slips in nicely, a little slider. One and two the count. Fastball two and two. Madison Bumgarner. Trying to beat the Dodgers for the 12th time. He's 11 and five. Last year three and two. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Away. Three and two. Waiting on deck, Juan Uribe. Giants two, Dodgers nothing, top of the four. Two out, bases empty.
fastball. The high she strikes out. Down go the Dodgers. Five strikeouts for Madison Bumgarner. And at the end of three and a half innings, it remains Giants two, Dodgers nothing. Attendance May 3rd. Receive a kid's Yashio Puig replica jersey presented by Rice Krispies Treats. For more information, go to Dodgers.com slash promotions. Yashio tonight is one for two. Made one diving catch in right field. By the way, remember Daniel Descalso, little second baseman with the Cardinals. He's now with the Rockies. Well, he just got a walk-off base hit. And the Rockies beat the Padres five to four. The batter Buster Posey fouls it away. You have to wonder a walk off base hit ninth inning if that was against Craig Kimball. Remember the great closer that the Padres picked. Well, we're going to double check and see. Posey robbed of a base hit on a diving catch by Puy. Off speed change up for a strike. Oh and two. Buster Posey got a great bit of advice from his father. He was only about seven or eight, but he certainly never forgot it. Fouled away. His father said to him, no matter what's going on, if things are going good or bad, carry yourself the same way so no one can tell the difference. And he has certainly taken that to heart. 0 oh, and 2. Fastball, and somehow he stays on it. Just keeps fouling them off like good hitters do. That was almost unhittable, though he just tried to foul it away. In the dirt. One and two to Buster Posey. Posey was so good in college. He was an All-American shortstop. The coach felt he was such a great leader. He made him a catcher. And yet, he was also used seven or eight times as a closer. Fastball at the knees. The Posey rung up. Does not agree with Clint Fagan. And walks away. Three strikeouts. Yeah, you can understand why Posey was a little annoyed on that one. So one out. Justin Maxwell coming up, but again, Posey, following his dad's advice, just controls himself and quietly walks away. Ball one to Maxwell. Maxwell, very bright. He had a 4 0 grade point average out of high school and was accepted to go to school at Harvard. 
And he drives one in the air, but it's very playable. It's a room service fly ball. It's coming to Puy. Two down. Why did Justin Maxwell, who qualified to go to Harvard, go to Maryland? For one simple reason. He wanted to be a baseball player, and Maryland had the much better and bigger baseball organization. So here's Brandon Belt. Brandon Belt struggling, struck out. He is three for 28 lifetime against Kershaw. Fastball strike. By the way, the answer was that Craig Kimbrell pitching? No. The answer was Sean Kelly. The Descalzo beats Kelly, and the Rockies beat the Padres. One and one to Belt. Two to nothing favor the Giants were in the fourth inning. Slow roller foul. One and two. Brandon Belt followed in the footsteps in a sense of Roger Clemens. Started at San Jacinto College, transferred to the University of Texas, and he helped propel Texas to the College World Series in 2009, but they lost to LSU. Fastball just off the plate. Two and two. Two and two to Belt. Ball three. Belt married his high school sweetheart a couple of years ago, and the wedding cake was three tiers of chocolate with a giant's cap on top and alternating Longhorns and Giants logo on the side. That's a baseball man. Three and two. Fastball got him. The belt goes down. Two strikeouts in the inning. Four in the game. And at the end of four innings, Giants two, Dodgers nothing. Single and a walk to the number seven and eight hitters that had to gall Kershaw. Then the bunt by Bumgarner, followed by the ground ball that scored one and the base hit scored another. Meanwhile, the Giants have faced the Dodgers face to face and shut them down pretty well through four innings. So Juan Uribe, second time around, Uribe popped up in the second inning. On the hands fought off 0 and 1 the count. We talk about Bumgarner being a real country boy. When he signed with the Giants, they assigned him to their instructional league in Scottsdale. 
and he was there maybe a week and he called the Giants director of player personnel and said I want to quit I want to go home. Oh and one. Oh and two. His mother talked to him. Said that actually Bumgarner didn't like baseball didn't like anything. He was. Homesick want to come home but it was mother who told him to stick it out. One and two the count. Well after her counseling. He stuck it out all right. And he's been sticking it to major league batters ever since. One and two. Two and two. Juan Uribe, 0 for 1. Trying to get something started. Two balls, two strikes. Fastball line to center, base hit. So Bumgarner was trying to freeze Uribe. Uribe would not back out of the box. Then Bumgarner threw the fastball, and Uribe a line drive single. Now the batter is A.J. Ellis, who flied to right field back in the second inning. Another wonderful thing about Bumgarner, he's won three world championships through the age of 25. Only Vita Blue, the only other pitcher to accomplish that at such a young age. That's a strike. Ellis checking. Uribe at first belt in front of him. Not really on the bag. Little ground ball to third. Arias makes the play, advancing to second is Uribe. Ball was not hit hard enough, and Arias never even looked over to maybe get a force play at second. I think he's a little annoyed at himself. Look at him muttering. So that'll bring up Kershaw. You rebate at second, one down. Kershaw trying to pick him up. Struck out in the third inning. Oh and one. 94 mile an hour fastball. Two runs, two hits for the Giants. No runs, three hits for the Dodgers. Turner a single, Puig a single, Uribe a single. Another fastball and another strike. 0 oh and 2 the count on deck, Jimmy Rollins, who has struck out twice. One out. Slow curveball. Missed way inside. So a couple of fastballs. Now the slow curve. One and two the count. Kershaw, a pitcher, trying to think like a pitcher as Uribe takes a lead. Slow breaking ball down and away. Posey drops, recovers, throws him out. Uribe had to hold. So Kershaw fooled on the slow breaking ball, strikes out a second time. That's six strikeouts for Madison Bumgarner. Jimmy Rollins has struck out twice. The strike off speed. Rollins came into the game with only three hits. 
in 17 at bats against Bumgarner. So add two more. He's three for 19. Rollins has also struck out seven times against Bumgarner. Fastball. One and one. You can see Bumgarner's pitches 20 in the first inning and only eight in the fourth. 75 pitches through four innings. Kershaw made 63. We're in the fifth. Rollins trying to pick up Uribe and get the Dodgers on the board. Away. Two and one. When Bumgarner started a World Series game first time, he was 21 years, 91 days old, joining the list of the youngest pitchers to ever start a World Series game. Bullet Joe Bush, Jim Palmer, Fernando Valenzuela, Johnny Padres, and Chief Bender. Fouled away. How'd he come out? Well, whether it's windy or otherwise, Bumgarner very much on his game. He pitched eight scoreless innings in game four, won the game four to nothing, beating the Rangers. Deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two out, a runner at second, and the Giants lead 2 0. Fastball, broken back, little ground ball. Duffy is there, and that's out. Talk about a bat being sawed off in your hands. Rollins can tell you all about it. No runs ahead, a man left. Uribe at second, at the end of four and a half, 2 0 Giants. So far tonight, the highlight for the Dodgers would be the diving catch by Puig in the second inning on the ball hit by Posey. Otherwise, it's all Giants leading two to nothing. Bumgarner has struck out six, and Kershaw ready to work on Arias. That contrast hangs heavily. Took him seven pitches to retire the numbers four, five, and six hitters, and in the third inning started with Arias. He had to make 25 pitches and he gave up the two runs. Oh, and two fouled away. Arias grew up in Santa Domingo and the family very poor. 
The parents and eight children shared two bedrooms and one bathroom. He has a brother, a little older, Alberto. He pitched for Houston and Colorado, and his brother's now pitching in the Mexican League. Two and two. One of the nice things when you make some money as a big league player, first thing he did, he built his mom a new home, and since then, he's helped buy six other houses for his brothers and sisters. As he said, it's one of my favorite things to do, help the family. Three and two to Joaquin Arias. Got him. So Arias strikes out. Strikeout number five for Kershaw. Bumgarner has six. Don't forget Sunday at five, Sportsnet LA brings you a one-on-one -on -one sit down interview with shortstop Jimmy Rollins. Get connected with the All-Star. He'll talk about adjusting to new second baseman Howie Kendrick. Tune in for the premiere of Connected with Jimmy Rollins, Sunday at 5 on Sportsnet LA. So one away, here's Brandon Crawford, a big at bat in the third inning, drew a walk, and eventually scored. Oh, and one. Oh, and two. Crawford's name will be around A and T Park for just about ever, because they bought a brick outside the ballpark when it opened, right near the Willie Mays statue. And there's a brick with initials Mike Lynn, Brandon, Amy, Caitlin, and Jenna Crawford. And down he goes. So all of a sudden, Kershaw has struck out a half a dozen. He has struck out three in a row, and he has struck out five of the last six. He's gotten Pagan and Posey and Belt and Arias and Crawford in between. Maxwell hit the fly ball to right. So here comes Bumgarner had a good at bat got the bunt down with two strikes and it meant two runs. Ball one. Fastball in there. Bumgarner a little bit like Arias he got a couple of million dollar bonus so immediately paid off his mom house one and two One and two. Slow curve ball. See you later. So he strikes out the side. That's four in a row. Five out of six. Six out of seven. But at the end of five, it's still two nothing Giants.
10 game winning streak and they lost two out of three to the Giants. Undeterred they turned around and won another 10 in a row. So the Dodgers started off the 1955 season 22 and 2. And as far as the pennant race was concerned it was over early in May. That was what you call a streak. Let's go back to this one. So Kershaw has suddenly come alive. He has struck out five of the last six, six of the last seven. But Bumgarner has struck out six and is leading two to nothing. Turner popped up, singled, one for two. Dodgers have gotten one man to second base. That was Uribe in the fifth inning. We're in the sixth. Tomorrow, the concluding game. And that'll be Ryan Vogel's song and Mike Bolsinger just called up. One and oh. Fastball. Bumgarner walked Heisey in the second inning. That's his only walk. Kershaw walked Crawford in the third. So they've just been throwing strikes. Two and one. Last year, Dodgers won six out of nine up here and then lost six of ten at home. And following this three game series, Dodgers go to San Diego and then pick right up with the Giants again Monday night. Light breeze blowing out from left to right. Totally different than last night. And a slicing fly ball up into that wind. Maxwell going on his horse and makes the catch. That's the deepest part of the park, 421 feet away. So the combination of the wind and the drive sent it into the corner, and Maxwell doing a great job out there in right field. So that ball had a lot of carry on it, a long out. So that'll bring up Puig. Puig single to right, looped out to Brandon Belt in the third inning. Little six game hitting streak and batting 306. One ball and no strikes. Fastball. Two and oh. Fastball has been clocked as high as 95. Then he has the slider and the changeup. A couple of years ago, he also added the cutter. And fastball away. Now see. About a three and oh count with three. And taken all the way. Three and one with Kendrick on deck. Three and two. That was either the cutter or a very tight slider and somewhat of an awkward swing by Puig as Kendrick waits. So it was three and oh, now three and two. Two nothing. Favor the Giants, and we're in the sixth inning. Dodgers no runs, three hits. Giants two runs two hits and the fastball is ball four second walk given up by Bumgarner he walked Heisey in the second inning 
Howie Kendrick struck out in the first inning and lined out in the fourth. So you had that long fly ball by Turner caught by Maxwell. Now the walk. Kendrick hit one right on the screws but it was right at Maxwell in right field. Tweed at first with one out. Ball one. Kind of a change up at 75 and he just flipped it in there. That's the magic. The same move can produce a 94 mile an hour fastball and a 75 mile an hour. And the move looks exactly the same. Fastball line to left. Coming up is Aoki and makes the rolling catch. So Nori Aoki on a sinking line drive stays with it. So there have been two balls hit. One by Turner caught in right center by Maxwell and now this time Nori Aoki on the ball hit by Kendrick. So if uh, Bumgarner good outfield play behind him and two out Scott Van Slyke coming up and a frustrated Kendrick who's hit the ball hard twice and is 0 for 3. Van Slyke grounded to short and popped up to belt. Off speed, strike. Had a total of 13 strikeouts thus far. Six for Bumgarner, seven for Kershaw. On one. Dodgers were averaging better than five runs a game during their streak. They came up with only two last night. And nothing so far tonight. The slider down and dirty in the count of one two. The count with two out. And slider in the dirt. One and two. Only the second meeting of 19 between these two teams. Late in September, they have a four game series. Here's the one two pitch. Instead, keeping an eye on Pui. Bumgarner, like Kershaw, definitely controls the running game. One ball and two strikes. Interesting that Bumgarner has the Dodgers shut out for five and two third innings. He's allowed nine runs in ten innings in his last two starts. Over that stretch, his earned run average was over eight. Well, he's just too good to hang around with those numbers. And it's a two ball, two strike count. This got Ben's life. Giants two, Dodgers nothing. Off the plate. Crowd so intense. I mean, they've grown on one pitch. So with two down, Puig held on by Belt. 
taking a very cautious lead. Best advised against Bumgarner. Three and two. Swung on. Line drive. Base hit to left field. Aoki plays it on two hops. Quig holds. And the batter will be the newcomer. Chris Heisey. The Van Slyke. One for three. Singles to left. So the two outs. Turner hit one to deepest right center. Caught by Maxwell. Kendrick hits a sinking line drive to left. Caught by Aoki. And the Dodgers with a walk and a single have two on and two out George Contos going down to the pen so Bumgarner for the first time facing the time runs on base Icy has walked and struck out. And starts him at the knees. Slider for a strike, 0 and 1. Icy called up because they wanted to rest Peterson. They had Van Slyke to play for Crawford. And they figure Chris can play center field, which he can. Fastball, and suddenly he's in a hole, 0 and 2. Slider, fastball, and he's on the edge. Bumgarner trying for his seventh strikeout. Kershaw has seven. Two runs, two hits for the Giants, no runs, four hits for the Dodgers. Dodgers have left four. Giants have left one. No balls, two strikes. Just did lay off a high fastball. The one and two to count to Chris Heise. Icy had 50 home runs while he played with the Reds, averaging about 10 a year. One and two. Change curve, ground ball to Aoki, down to second. That's the inning. No runs, one hit, two left. And at the end of five and a half innings, it remains Giants two, Dodgers nothing. is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Jack's hottest sandwich is back. Head to Jack in the Box for Jack's blazing chicken sandwich. And by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Choose Nissan.com. 
It figured to be a tough game. That's exactly what it is. The Giants lead two to nothing on two hits. Dodgers no runs, four hits. And in the bottom of the six, it'll be the top of the order, the pesky Aoki, and then Duffy and Pagan. Corners are up looking bunt. Big curveball for a strike. Aoki hit back to the box and grounded to short. The ground ball to short produced a run. Though he's 0 for 2 with an RBI. Foul back. Kershaw on a strikeout here. Struck out the side on 14 pitches in the fifth inning. He has struck out six of the last seven batters. The only one to hit the ball, Justin Maxwell, flied to right field in the fourth inning. Hard breaking ball. That was a slider. Still 0 2. Okie, Duffy, and Pagan. If anybody gets on, Posey. Fastball. Okie just lost his balance. One and two. Little ground ball, first base wide open, foot race, safe at first. Turner went wide, the only play, and of course Mattingly is saying hold it. They're going to check as to whether they should dispute the call at first. So Aoki, a ground ball to Turner, but he had to hang it, and there was the foot race, so close. Kershaw's foot is in the air and Aoki's foot's on the bag. So the Dodgers would lose that. And I guess they they've checked and understand it's a losing cause. It sure was close. Aoki just did beat him by a hair. Tough call and Manny Gonzalez the umpire right there to call it. So an infield single for Aoki and here's Duffy. Duff grounded to be short, single to center, and ball one. Aoki last night had a similar single, only on the ground ball last night, Gonzalez hung the ball over first, and there was no pitcher there to catch it. So that helped give the Giants two runs. Now we'll see what happens with the squib single tonight. Fastball. One on one. Matt Duffy tells a story at the end of high school. He hadn't committed to a college program. SC, Cal State, Bakersfield had offered partial scholarships. But he was invited by a local coach to play on his team in the Tournament of Stars in North Carolina. And when he got off the bus, the first player he met was Bryce Harper. Ball two, two and one. And there were so many other terrific young players on the team. And he found himself hitting third, performed well enough to catch the attention of coaches from Long Beach State who offered him a scholarship. And as Matt said, that's great. I grow up watching Long Beach State. I have to go across the country to get them to notice me. The boy from Long Beach came home after a trip to North Carolina. Two and one to Matt Duffy. And Oki is picked off. The tag was it missed. Yeah. Missed by Turner. So Aoki was certainly picked off. And Turner went after him. I think the big mistake that Justin made was going after him. If Turner had held his ground at first, see, he left it open. Well, maybe Turner thought that he left 
the baseline, and that's what Mattingly is arguing about. Turner gestures again. Mattingly, who played first base and did it very well, take another look. See where Turner is, and look where Aoki crawled around Turner to the bag. Justin appealed immediately. So they weren't going to appeal on the on the close play, the foot race with Kershaw. And the first base umpire said, okay, if you want me to ask, I'll go over and ask. So the umpires will get together. Saoki is picked off and then avoids the tag by Turner. Crawling hands and knees, and the left hand gets the bag. Turner immediately gestures that he ran out the lines. But Aoki is aboard, and the batter, Duffy, in the count, two balls in one strike. Runner going and a foul ball. Two and two. Matt Duffy's late grandmother on his father's side was an assistant to Pierre Salinger. You certainly remember that name during the Kennedy days. That Pierre was campaign manager for Robert Kennedy. Grandmother was at the Ambassador Hotel. When RFK was assassinated, Pierre Salinger ran for senator in the in the California against George Murphy. Two and two. Love Chopper. Still two and two. Two runs, three hits for the Giants. No runs, four hits for the Dodgers. Dodgers had left a half a dozen, and the Giants have left just one. They left Duffy in the third inning. So the pest, Nori Aoki, as Bumgarner sits back and relaxes. Two and two. Three and two. Giants lead two to nothing. They picked up their two runs in the third inning. A walk after a base hit, a good battle at the plate with Madison Bumgarner, who on a 2 2 count got his bunt down, and eventually two runs came over. Three and two, so we'll see about Aoki. He's already been picked up once and goes late, and it's fouled away. So Duffy giving it a battle. Still three and two. Matt is 6'2 and maybe 170 pounds. He was an 18th round pick by the Giants. Three and two. Aoki goes, strike three. Ellis, a high throw to Kendrick. The tag is out. So Aoki is doubled up. On a high throw by Ellis. Two away, and that'll bring up Angel Pagan. So Kershaw now picks up his eighth strikeout and gets two outs as Kendrick pins the sliding Aoki. Fouled away. So Aoki sits back. One for three, but the pest is finally nailed. Another guy who had the nickname the pest, a Dodger and a Giant many, many years ago, Eddie Stanky. 
Right. Talk about a little ball. Wear you out every different way, and that's what Ioki has done it just in the two games. Pagan fly to right, struck out, 0 for 2. Fastball, high strike. Down he goes. Pagan can't believe it. So Kershaw picks up two more strikeouts. He struck out nine, and while Pagan argues, we can tell you the Giants still lead 2-0. We have reached the seventh inning in this pitching duel between Madison Bumgarner and Clayton Kershaw. It figured to be tough, and the Giants lead two to nothing. Bumgarner has struck out six. Kershaw has struck out nine. George Contos will back up Bumgarner, who's made 101 pitches. Jimmy Garcia gets up in the Dodger bullpen because Kershaw is due up third. Uribe Ellis and then Clayton Spot. Uribe popped a short, single to center. And that's going to be hit right at Duffy at second base. So one out on the line drive. A.J. Ellis coming up. Coming up to swing a bat is the Dodgers' most successful player as a pinch hitter. The Dodger pinch hitters are two for 18 with a home run. Alex Guerrero has the two hits and he has the home run. So Kershaw strikes out nine, but he's losing two nothing. Interesting, as we mentioned earlier, the only two games that Clayton Kershaw has lost up here. He is eight and two in his career. And he's lost each time two to nothing. Off speed, little spinner. AJ Fooled, 0 and 2. Adrian Gonzalez holding a bat, but out of uniform. Fastball on an 0 and 2 pitch. That's a mistake. And Ellis singles to left field. So you had your rebay line out to Duffy. Ellis now single to left, 0 and 2. And the batter will be Alex Guerrero. The Guerrero 
has been very successful. Dodgers hope he will continue to be that way tonight. He is two for five with a home run. And so Kershaw, after striking out nine, goes out losing two to nothing. Fastball fouled away. The giant bullpen is busy. Sergio Romo goes running down there. George Contos, big right hander already there. 0 and 1. One out, seventh inning, two nothing Giants. Off speed, and he missed with it. One and one. On the hands and a high fly ball into deep left field. Guerrero has done it again. And he hits it more than halfway up the pavilion for his second pinch hit home run. And the Dodgers have tied it up 2 2. Calambre. Well, Guerrero has three hits as a pinch hitter, two of them home runs. He is three for six as a pinch hitter. And remember, Ellis got aboard on a no ball, two strike fastball. And Boshi figures that's enough. So Guerrero, another miracle at bat. And it's such a miracle, it knocks Bumgarner out. It prevents Bumgarner from having any chance of a win or a loss. It keeps Kershaw still alive. George Contos coming in, and we will be back. the Dodgers Alex Guerrero and I mean he crushed that thing and Bumgarner knew all about it Alex drove it deep into the pavilion a good three quarters of the way up to the top and there was one of those no doubt about it so that gives the Dodgers the tie at 2 2 Bumgarner is finished for the night and George Contos will be doing the pitching now Jimmy Rollins who is 0 for 3 now hitting left handed and as far as Kershaw is concerned he can't lose he still has a shot should the Dodgers do something here in the seventh there's only one out one and one George Contos grew up in the Chicago area as Bumgarner now watches him. George played baseball, basketball. He also played golf. One year he was the 
Gatorade Player of the Year for Illinois. One and one. Fastball hit foul down the line. Contos went to Northwestern University, majored in economics, and he is Greek on both sides of his family. In fact, he speaks Greek very well. Pretty much raised by his grandparents, so his first language was Greek. Finally, he was put in a Montessori preschool, and he couldn't understand anything the children were saying. Twice a week throughout his childhood, George attended Greek school for an hour and a half after regular school. And they tell me he still speaks, writes, and reads Greek fluently. He was originally drafted by the Yankees. And he had Tommy John surgery in 2009. Fastball got him. So for Rollins, rough night, he strikes out three times. And that'll bring up Justin Turner. That is the first strikeout for Contos. Bumgarner had a half a dozen. Bumgarner talking to the first base coach. That would be Bill Hayes. One pitch ruined his night. Turner has popped up, singled, and a long out. The ball he hit to right center, Maxwell ran it down in that crease, which is 421 feet away. Contos very smart. When he had the Tommy John surgery during his rehab, he took enough classes to earn his degree in finance from Northwestern. What was really heartwarming for the Contos, he got his degree at Northwestern, and years before, his grandfather worked as a custodian at Northwestern. You can imagine the joy in the family. Like Angel Pagan, he works very hard lifting weights, he does yoga. He boxes twice a week. He's very much into martial arts. Oh, and two the count. George is 6 3 in about 215. Just off the plate. I've never heard of it. Maybe you have the martial arts that he practices. Looks like Moway Thai. It's the art of eight weapons. Little roller up the middle. Crawford on it. Juggles, drops it, picks it up, throws. Too late. The Turner is aboard. It'll probably be an error charge to Crawford. So the inning is still alive for Yasiel Pui. So it's an E6. Crawford has it run up his wrists and then drop it for good measure. Just to conclude the thought about that martial arts he practices, it's the combined use of fists, elbows, knees, shins, and feet. Why does he do it? It helps with flexibility. Well, he has to be a little flexible now as Puig checks in. One for two, single and a walk. Turner at first, two out, and a 2 2 tie. And a high fly ball to right field going back. Maxwell on the track puts it away. But it's Alex Guerrero who comes up off the bench and hits one three quarters of the way up the pavilion in left field. And at the end of six and a half innings, Dodgers two, Giants two.
level ticket for only $22 for the Dodgers and Giants game. That'll be Wednesday, April 29th at 710. And the first 40,000 fans receive a Clayton Kershaw fleece blanket presented by Security Benefit. So by now, availability is limited. Purchase visit Dodgers.com slash 22. Jimmy Garcia coming in now to try and hold on to a tie and see if his teammates can't break it. And leading off, Buster Posey, ball one. Posey so far fly deep to right and was called out on strikes. And he hits a mile high fly ball, but it's playable. In left field, it's Van Slight. And we have one away. So Yimmy Garcia, after Alex Guerrero gets the Dodgers in a tie, and they give the ball to Yimmy. Maxwell twice fly to right field. Sergio Romo running down to the pen. One ball and no strikes. Maxwell hit the ball pretty hard. Both times Puig was there to handle it. Dodgers two runs six hits. Giants two runs three hits. Line drive backhanded by Rollins. So Jimmy Rollins takes a base hit away from Maxwell and Brandon Belt coming up. That ball hit hard and a fine play by Jimmy. During the offseason, Jimmy Garcia played catch with his younger brother. His brother is a pitcher in the Yankee system. And during the course of playing catch, Jimmy kept watching the way his brother was throwing. The way he would keep his wrist upright, allow the ball to tumble over his index finger. And Jimmy Garcia said, his slider is slower than mine, but with a lot more movement. So his brother showed him how to do it, and that's one reason why he's in the big leagues now. Fastball. Joe Panic, left-hand batter, is out on deck. Two and zero the count to Brandon Belt. When Garcia arrived in spring training, he couldn't wait. To show the Dodgers about that new pitch. Two and zero, fastball at 93. In spring training with his new pitch, he allowed one run and struck out 15 in 11 and a third innings. So he made the opening day roster, and he's now. One of the reliable guys coming out of the bullpen. Another pitch just missed. Three and one. Three and one to Brandon Belt. Dodgers have loaded up the infield on the right side, and that's ball four. The paid attendance tonight, 42,259. That would be the 336th sellout consecutive. Paco Rodriguez now has run down to the pen as Joe Panic will come up and bat for Joaquin Arias. So panic with two out, belt at first in a 2 2 tie. And now Rick Honeycutt is going out to the mound, and they were also gesturing down to the bullpen to Paco, I think, to hurry up. Just get ready, which of course is a big problem. And a good hitter in panic at the plate.
Though Rick talking to Emmy Garcia. All the while Rodriguez getting ready. Panic the left hand batter. If you look at the giant bench if they decided to. Take somebody and hit for panic. They have McGee a right hander Susak a right hander. They have the. Outfielder Gregor Blanco left hand batter. And they have Hector Sanchez one of the three catchers. Sanchez a switch hitter. But they will stay with panic. Well they should panic gave them a great year last year. Last night panic was one for four. Low and away ball one. Panic out of Yonkers, New York, and Hopewell Junction. There goes Chris Hatcher down to the pen. Belt at first, two out, two two in the seventh. So I guess it figured when you have two great pitchers like Bumgarner and Kershaw, neither one will win, neither one loses. It's a draw. High pop foul out of play. One and one the count. I'm sure that Bumgarner would like to get the pitch back. The home run by Guerrero. But what was overlooked is I'm sure the pitch he wants to get back. No balls, two strikes. And a fastball to A.J. Ellis, his single to left. One and one. Ball two. Panic played shortstop throughout high school and college, but he's established certainly as a major league second baseman. In September last year, as a giant rookie, he went five for five against Arizona. That misses. Boy, was that close. Three and one to go. Belt with two out, a cautious lead. Waiting on deck. Crawford. And ball four. So now, let's see. You have the left hand hitting Crawford coming up. The Dodgers have Paco Rodriguez in the pen. Now they have Chris Hatcher. Crawford has walked and struck out and scored a run. There'll be another meeting only with A.J. Ellis. They have another meeting, of course. Garcia has to come out. And here comes Mattingly, so that'll be that. So you'd assume that Paco Rodriguez will be called in to face the left-hander, Brandon Crawford. Tough ball game. We have a 2-2 tie, bottom of the seventh, two out. Giants have two on, and we'll be back.
Tom at bat. That's the number one app for live baseball. At bats up to the moment. At any moment with in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat casts, and a lot more. So get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. And so it has come down to this. A 2-2 tie, bottom of the seventh inning. Brandon Crawford against left-hander Paco Rodriguez. The pitcher spot follows Crawford, and we have two out. So Chris Hatcher throwing in the bullpen in case Brandon Crawford comes up with something important. Breaking ball, but he missed the inside corner. Ball one. One and zero. Oh. Paco inheriting two walks given up by Yimmy Garcia. Crawford walked and scored and struck out. One ball and no strikes. Breaking ball in there. Andrew Susak, a catcher, is now out on deck. Giants have three catchers. Susak can come in and Posey can go to first. Big slow breaking ball again. One and two to count to Crawford. Belt at second, panic at first. Breaking ball fouled away. So a lot of slow stuff. On a cold night, the foul ball gets AJ on the right wrist. Boy, that had a burn. Hmm. All part of a day's work, however, for a catcher. One ball and two strikes. Fast ball. First time he's done that. It's 87 on the gun and Crawford is still there. In the inning Posey flied to left. Maxwell robbed of the hit. A leaping catch by Jimmy Rollins. But then Belt walked and panic walked. Well Paco trying to get Crawford to get out of the inning. And keep it a 2 2 tie. Breaking ball fouled away. John's got two runs way back early in the game in the third inning. Dodgers finally broke through the pinch hit home run by Guerrero with a man aboard. It was Ellis who hit an 0 2 fastball for a base hit. Now the Giants threaten. A couple of walks with two out. And Rodriguez going head to head with Crawford. Fast one in the dirt. Gets away from Ellis, but the run is hold. Not quite sure what that pitch was. He gave Ellis. A little trouble. We could take another look at the play. Watch it. Oh, down on now. You can see it was another breaking ball that hit the front of home plate right there. So deuces are wild. Two balls, two strikes, two out, two on, a two-two tie in the seventh. Paco against Brandon. Well, what a net bat for Brandon Crawford. He's hanging tough now. Eight pitches so far. Hatcher is ready in the bullpen. He's in a crouch for the moment. Now stands up and watches. AJ going out to talk to Rodriguez. Dramatically on a cold night, sweating out the moment. 
Tomorrow afternoon, Ryan Vogel song and Mike Bowl singer. Dodgers go to San Diego, and then on Monday, it might very well be Bum Garner and Kershaw in a rematch. Two and two to Crawford. This will be the ninth pitch of his at bat. Fastball got him looking after all the slow breaking balls. Crawford just could not believe it. And Paco wins the duel. No runs, no hits, two left. And at the end of seven, we have a 2 2 tie. Guerrero gets the Dodgers even and we go to the eighth inning in a 2 2 tie couple of changes we'll give it to you in a moment but Sergio Romo facing Howie Kendrick and slider for a strike Matt Duffy who started the game at second base is now at third Joe Panic who pinch hit takes over at second and Sergio Romo on the mound. Another slider. That's the thing about Romo. You wonder sometimes if he doesn't rely on one pitch too much. The so called one trick pony. But that slider is certainly giving him a fine career since he came up back in 2008. Fastball on the hands. Kendrick fouls it away. Howie Kendrick struck out, lined out to right. Then hit a sinking line drive to left, and Nori Aoki made a diving catch that was in the sixth inning. Two runs, three hits for the Giants, two runs, six hits for the Dodgers. Giants have left three, the Dodgers have left seven. Slider. Alex Guerrero came off the bench. And really crushed one three quarters of the way up with Ellis aboard to get the Dodgers even. Second time this early part of the year, Alex has come off the bench and hit a home run. The Kendricks goes down with the slider, and the batter will be Van Slyke. Little slider on the inside corner. Van Slyke rounded to short, popped up, single to left. 
eight Dodgers have struck out. Ten Giants have struck out. Avi Lopez in the bullpen. Another slider. On two. There's Javi. Dodgers have Jock Peterson out on deck. Well, if they send him up, left hand batter, you might very well see the left hander Lopez. And another slider. He does it. I mean, everybody in the ballpark knows what he has. Every hitter knows. But it's a slider in, it's a slider down, it's a slider away. Here's the slider away. No way that Scott can get to it. So with two out, Jock Peterson will now bat for Chris Heisey. Let's see about Bruce Boshi. He will stay with Romo. Peterson got a rest with Heisey playing center, but now he's back in there. And a straight pitch for ball one. Peterson hitting 300. He has two home runs, six runs batted in. And a little sinker that time, ball two. Romo, 32 years old, been with the Giants since 08. That's in there. You get a fastball, you get a curveball, you get all kinds of sliders. He has a splitter and a changeup. Breeze has picked up a little bit, but not like last night. Two and one. Young Jock from nearby Palo Alto. Boshi having really his first good look at him. Fastball at 87. Two and two. So in a 2 2 tie, Peterson with the count two and two, two out. The Giants would have Romo spot leading off the bottom of the eighth inning. Off speed and away. Straight change up. So Romo goes all the way with Peterson and you have Juan Uribe on deck. It's been Bumgarner, Contos, and Romo, Kershaw, Garcia, Rodriguez, and a crowd of 42,000, loving every minute. Three and two. Fastball and a fly ball to right field, going back as Maxwell on the track and puts it away. So Peterson, fly ball to right. Dodgers go one, two, three, and we are heading to the bottom of the eighth in a two-two tie.
Rodgers? Well, the Giants tomorrow, and that'll be Vogel song and bowl singer. Dodgers then go to San Diego, who lost tonight. They'll play three there over the weekend, and Monday they'll wind up and do it again, and it will probably be Kershaw and Bumgarner. Jock Peterson, who just flied to right, stays in the game in center. Now, Andrew Susak, who had a couple of base hits and a walk last night, will come up and bat for Romo. Paco Rodriguez will stay in the game, or will he? Here comes Don Mattingly. Mattingly, now that Susak has been announced, it looks like he will bring in Chris Hatcher. We're also wondering if it's a double switch. Scott Van Slyke looks like he might be coming out. Andre Ethier looks like he'll be coming in. And we'll be right back. Of Kinston, North Carolina, originally signed by the Marlins in 2006, came up with the Marlins for a couple of years, up and down with New Orleans, and now with the Dodgers. Susak, followed by Aoki, and then Duffy. Andre Ethier is now in left field for Van Slyke. Ethier will bat ninth which means he will hit third in the ninth inning. And that's a strike to Susak. Santiago Casilla begins to warm up in the giant bullpen. Giants now have used four uh, three pitches getting ready for a fourth. Dodgers have used four. Kershaw, Garcia, Rodriguez, and Hatcher. Bumgarner, Cantos, and Romo so far. Chris 6'2", 205 pounder, 30 years old. One and one. One and two to Andrew Susak. Susak, a fine young catcher, and he's from Roseville and Carmichael, so he's certainly accustomed to everything up here. He went to school at Oregon State. Giants second round pick. Well, eventually they say Susak will give Posey more times to play first base. And there are those who think that Brandon Belt is such a good athlete, he could eventually play the outfield. Fastball at 96. Hatcher basically fastball slider change up and a splitter and down goes Susak. So Hatcher comes in takes charge immediately. 
11 Giants have struck out and eight Dodgers so we're talking 19 strikeouts tonight which kind of figured in a game that featured Bumgarner and Kershaw. Now Aoki hit back to the box grounded to short had the infield single was picked off and got back to the bag anyway. Ball one. Nori Aoki. One for three. Hitting 343. Uribe tight to the bag at third. Turner is up to the bag at first. So they're worrying about a bunt. 2 0 oh they count to Nori Aoki. And a strike. Aoki tough to pitch to. 5 8. Little bit of a crouch. And when he closes that stand, he's right on top of the plate. Two and one. And a drive to right. Going back, Pui gets over his head. He's on the track and makes the catch. That was a big league play by Yasiel. He had to turn his back and go. And then turn back and pick it off. So Aoki, a long fly ball to right. There's Puig turning his back. Now looks the other way. And makes the play. So that's the second out here in the eighth inning. And the batter will be Matt Duffy. Because Puig has made the defensive play way back in the second inning on that ball hit by Buster Posey. And Yasiel a diving catch back in the second inning. And that's a strike to Matt. Duff grounded to short, singled, struck out with Aoki going, wound up being a double play. Little high. Hatcher blowing on his hand, and the umpires let him do it. When the umpire is wearing gloves at first base, they figure it's cold enough. Yep. Manny Gonzalez well bundled up. One ball and one strike. That's fouled away. 95 mile an hour fastball. Two balls and two strikes. Chris Hatcher coming to the Dodgers in the deal that sent D. Gordon and Dan Harron away to Miami. Chris works in a hurry. Missed at 96. Three and two, two down. In a 2 2 tie, Angel Pagan hits behind Duffy. Fastball hit in the air to left, coming over Ethier to make the catch. Well, Duffy lines out to left, down go the Giants, and we're coming to the ninth inning in a 2 2 tie, Uribe, Ellis, and Ethier.
story. It is a small world indeed. Santiago Casilla is from the same little town in the Dominican Republic as Juan Uribe. Uribe is a year older, made it to the pros three years before Santiago. And Santiago says he remembers so well going to Uribe's house and asking him for baseball socks. And Uribe gave it to this poor kid in the Dominican. Santiago's first glove were homemade thick cardboard. He cut three holes for index, middle, and ring fingers. And now they go head to head against each other. Santiago Casilla. Fastball. Oh, what a nice play. Well, Casilla takes a base hit away from Uribe. Great way to thank him for giving him socks. One out. Casilla, by the way, is an even six. So he reacted quickly, reached up, made the play. So Uribe winds up going one for four. And the batter is A.J. Ellis. Ellis has one hit, but it was a big one. On a no ball, two strike count, he singled a left field against Bumgarner. And that allowed Guerrero to come up with two, with one out. And hit the home run to tie up the game. Fastball strike. Oh, and one. AJ a little annoyed on the call. Casilla is the seventh of 12 children. That's a strike. Of course, that's nothing like Arias, one of 21. Casilla pitched under the name Jairo Garcia for about five years. Typical, he knew American scouts want young players. So he took a name and a birth certificate from a friend. That's in there, and AJ knew it. Two down. So a lot of strikeouts everywhere you look. Six, seven, nine, ten Dodgers have struck out. 11 Giants, so we've had 21 walk empty handed back to the dugouts. Ethier, three for five in the past, batting ninth, playing left field. Big, slow breaking ball for a strike. The Sia, fastball in a curve. He has the slider and a changeup, working on a splitter. 0 oh 1. Fastball. No balls and two strikes. Fast ball away. Two out, top of the ninth, a two two time. Slider in the dirt. Two and two. Breeze has picked up a little bit now. Not quite as strong as last night, but it's going the same direction, right to left. Ball game coming up three hours, about four minutes to get to that mark.
guys in the bottom of the ninth have Pagan, Posey, and Maxwell. Ground ball up the middle for a base hit. So Heath Euro, two out single to center, and that will bring up Jimmy Rollins, who is certainly hungry at this stage. Jimmy Rollins in his leadoff role is 0 for 4, striking out three times. Ether at first, two out in the ninth, 2 2 tie. Off the plate, ball one. Jimmy last night in his first at bat really unloaded one towards right field. But last night that wind was howling from right to left, and Maxwell caught it right at the base of the wall. Otherwise, that would have been high off the wall, even had a chance to go out. Well, he wound up going over three. Kershaw who pitched well enough, as did Bumgarner, and they go out even. Two balls and no strikes. On deck, Justin Turner. So Casilla going three and zero. Oh. Now Rollins has enough pop. And there's ball four. So Rollins draws a walk. Ethier goes to second. Adrian Gonzalez is coming out to bat for Justin Turner. And remember that ball that Uribe hit. If Casilla doesn't make that stretch and catch, the Dodgers would really have something going. So Adrian Gonzalez will bat for Turner and then stay in at first base. Remember they had Javi Lopez warming up in the pen and normally you would expect Lopez to come in. He came in last night and faced Gonzalez in the eighth inning and Adrian grounded out but Lopez was down the pen once came back and obviously is not going to pitch. So they will load up the right side in the sense that panic is now a good 15 feet out in right field. Crawford up the middle. So not only does that take steps away from Andre Ethier, it kills up the middle on a ground ball. And Duffy is basically all alone on the left side of the infield. A little ground ball coming over to get it is the shortstop Crawford to throw him on. So the Dodgers leave two more. They've left nine men on base, and we're going to the bottom of the ninth inning in a 2 2 tie.
Gonzalez puts on the glove and takes over at first base. Dodger outfield is Ethier, Peterson, and Puig. Now the infield regular Gonzalez, Kendrick, Rollins, and Uribe. Chris Hatcher, they came in to get the out. That was Susack in the eighth inning. He struck him out. Now on his own against the heart of the lineup. Pagan, Posey, and Maxwell. J.P. Howell throwing in the Dodger pen. Pagan has flied to right and struck out twice against Kershaw. Hits a high fly ball, but just back a shortstop, and Rollins takes care of it. So Pagan doesn't hang around, one out. And now Buster Posey. Posey was robbed of a base hit by Yasiel Puig in the second inning. Struck out in the fourth and fly to left in the seven. Line drive right over the shoulder of Hatcher. The Posey is one for four and Justin Maxwell coming up. The Dodgers have J.P. Howell and the Giants have Gene Machi in the bullpen. Fastball right over his head. Giants only have four hits and they've left three. The Dodgers have seven hits and they've left nine. So here's Maxwell. Two fly balls to right. And lined out to short. And is he hit? Yep. He is hit by the pitch. And the Dodgers in trouble now. First and second run out. And Brandon Belt coming up. Stan Conti comes running out because A.J. Ellis got a little bit of that as well. Ellis, who had been hit on the wrist earlier, apparently hit on the hand. So first the elbow and then it came right down on the back of Ellis right hand. So both men shaking up a little. Maxwell goes to first and it's a question of whether A.J. Ellis can play. There you can see Asmani Grandall and Paul Crawford moving around. Ellis naturally wants to stay in. It's a decision. It's a cold night. And any kind of a hit has to really hurt. But that was one of those pitches that got two people. AJ says, let me catch. Let me see if I can throw. He wants to throw down to. Uh oh. Trying to make a throw to Adrian Gonzalez. Well, let me try that again. Uh oh. One more time. Bottom of the ninth. Two on, one out. Can the catcher stay in? I think they want him to come out, and I think A.J. wants to stay in, but Stan Conti is saying, no, you can't throw, can't play. So the Dodgers suffer a very tough break on a giant hit batsman. They lose their catcher. And Yasmani Grandal will have to put on the gear and take over. So Ellis twice hit on the hand, once on the wrist. And now this time on the back of the hand. So a tough break. And we'll see just how important. Here's Ellis trying to just throw the ball to Adrian Gonzalez. Apparently he didn't have any feeling in the hand. Then he said, wait a minute, let me try another one. And he threw that one away. So Grandall getting some instructions before he goes in there.
Gregor Blanco is now going to run for Maxwell. Well, let's see now. They're all going to leave for the moment. So Roberto Kelly is just talking to the base runners. Don Manningly making a possible double switch. And they're going to bring in J.P. Howell. So J.P. will come in and inherit first and second, one out in the ninth. Hatcher gave up the single and the hit batter, and we'll be back. At the same time as J.P. Howell, Howell will be asked to face Brandon Belt. Brandon Belt, two for five. That would be a 400 batting average for the big first baseman against Howell in the past. For J.P., he's about ready, and so is Belt. Howell is 0-1, good ERA of 2.2. Gregor Blanco is running for Posey at second. Justin Maxwell at first with one out. Belt will be followed by Joe Panic, another left hand batter. So the Dodgers in trouble. Bottom of the ninth, 2 2. Belt has struck out twice and walked. All of those at bats were against Clayton Kershaw. At least the strikeouts were. And then he struck out against Jimmy Garcia. Time. An umpire timeout, no problem. But Gregor Blanco carrying the winning run out there, running for Posey. Belt, the big first baseman. And ball one. Belt off to a slow start. Two RBIs. But he has a lot of power. Two on, one out. Breaking ball in for a strike. One and one to count. Blanco taking his lead. Jimmy Rollins directly behind him. The outfield split a bit. Peterson slightly in left center, even though you have a big left-hand hitter up. Uh, they give him a bit of a gap in right center field. 
One ball, one strike. Breaking ball slapped into left field. Here comes Blanco, and they will stop him as Ethier was playing short and got it in there. And the bases are loaded with one out, and the left hand hitting Joe Panic coming up, and now Don Manningly is coming out. So the bases are loaded, and a line drive single to left. We'll see where Blanco is in the third base coach. Blanco stops and bumps into the third base coach. Roberto Kelly, who at one time played for the Dodgers in 1995. The base is loaded, one out. Umpire appears to be laying down the law, if not the rule, to Mattingly. Here's the base hit. There's Blanco rounding third. There's Kelly going up to the bag. And Kelly looked like he stopped him. That's what Mattingly is arguing about. Not stopping him just waving, stopping him by actually putting his hands on the runner. Now the third base umpire, Field and Culbreth, who was the plate umpire last night when Mattingly lost the argument on the interference. The Mattingly and Culbreth had a little something going, but all the pressure now on the Dodgers. Joe Panic. Will be coming up. There's the base hit. Now watch Kelly. He goes right to the bag and then puts his hands on the base runner. Mattingly argues, but no chance. He had one last call with the plate umpire. The base is loaded one out, and Panic, who came into the game batting for Arias and walked in the seventh inning coming up. The so Blanco at third, Maxwell at second, Belt at first. And it is Blanco at third carrying the winning. And now, wait a minute, Mattingly is coming back out on the field. There's no one in the bullpen. They are calling Puig in, so it could very well be that we would have the so called six man infield, including the pitcher. That might be what Don is going to do. The original idea, if indeed that's what Manning was going to do, the original idea of the so called six man infield was to be used against a bad hitting pitcher in a bunt situation. That was the idea to make a bad hitting pitcher swing away. Well, now you've got a good hitting infielder in panic, and the bases are loaded. Yasiel Puig is now playing third. Juan Uribe is at short. They're going to move Jimmy Rollins over to the right side. So the outfielders are really split. Jock Peterson is in shallow right center. Andre Ethier is in shallow left. And a six man infield, if you include the pitcher, set up against Panic. Blanco the winning run at third and a high fly ball that's plenty deep Peterson going way back Blanco tags and he can walk in from center field so the Giants beat the Dodgers again this time three to two it is an angry Dodger ball club and a delighted giant team so the Giants.